And I think without further ado, we're going to get Jeff up here to, to turn a bowl for us. Yeah. All right. My name is Jeff Heidela, and they asked me to turn a, do a demo. I haven't done a demo in probably 20, 25 years, so I may be a little rough here. We'll see what we do. Um, I can. Natural edge bowls are generally pretty simple. They're pretty straightforward. There's a few things you got to kind of watch out for. Number one is when you're looking at your piece of wood, you got to make sure the, the bark is going to be held on there well. Um, cer certain woods, particularly one that I can think of right offhand, uh, box elder, does not like to hold on to its bark. It's not, a, not usually a good, usually, there's always exceptions but not usually a good choice for if you're going to do a natural edge bowl. Um, there's some others too. And uh, uh, another thing that, that's been mentioned to me over the years is that you don't want to get wood in the spring when the sap is flowing. And honestly, I haven't noticed a whole lot of difference in uh, how well the bark holds on. It just really depends on the particular piece of wood, the, the variety of tree and so on. <clears throat> But let's uh, let's start up here. I, I got a, a couple pieces roughed in here, and maybe you want to do this down here. Different shapes. Just those are just roughed in, but um, you can see a little bit of different different ideas, different shapes. Um, you can even have it come back, uh, return and make a smaller hole at the top, but, uh, just a little variety. Um, one thing I do like about natural edge bowls is a lot of times, if you knock a piece of that bark off, you can, you can get it back on there and camouflage it very well and not have a gaping, you know, mistake. <clears throat> but, uh, anyway, one thing... I don't really care for this bowl here, and uh, it, it was a small tree, okay? It was, as you see, there's no, no sidewall, just the ends. A gunnel, there's a little canoe, um, but being it was such a small tree that this curve here in the front is pretty pretty acute. So by the time you get any width to it, you're, you're cutting way back on the edges. Um, so this one, I haven't, I haven't finished turned. It may wind up being in the fireplace before very long. But uh, anyway, let's start. I got a blank here, and basically you're, you're just going to cut up your blank just like you would any standard bowl, but instead of mounting it this way on the mm -hmm. lathe and, and making this the foot, you're just gonna, you're, basically you're going to turn it around. You're going to make this the foot. <clears throat> and as you turn it, this will become oval looking. Um, I mean, I'll explain that real quick, because if you look at this bowl, it does not look round. And that's the, that's the kind of the charm of the natural edge bowls is if you typically do not, they do not look round. But if you were to take a cross section from here, it would be, it would be round. It's just that when you get out here, you have nothing to cut. You're cutting air. So... It looks oval, but it's really um, any cross section you would take would be part of a, a round circle. <clears throat> All right. Not my lathe. All right. One of the first things, 
I like to do is balance where the bark is going where where the natural edge is going to be. So I got a high point and a high point, opposite sides, and those should be pretty much in line. If you get them off line, you can get away with that sometimes if you're doing something artistic, but but most of the time you'll want those two high points to be on the same plane. Right, so basically I'll just slide my tool rest up here, look at, look at it with my finger, and get them pretty close. I mean, if they're within a quarter inch or so, that's no big deal. Then the low points also should be approximately the same. You'll see here with my other bowls that they're balanced. If you have one side or one corner that's significantly higher or lower than the other, it just does not look good. So, so you're trying to do, you, before you get uh, too far along, I'm just taking my finger and, and gauging where I'm at with this. <clears throat> a little later on, if I need to, I can make adjustments because it's just between centers. I can back this off and tweak it around. So, yep. Two point. I normally with any bowls that I do, I like to. I, I prefer to use a two point. Um, if I'm doing spindles, typically I use a four point. Don't use one of these. <laughs> I was, I was asked if I would bring this in to show you don't use a, a spindle roughing gouge to turn a bowl for a couple reasons. One is the tang is very weak um, as far as bowl turning goes. Bent? Yeah. yeah. A couple things. One is the, the tang is weak. Two is it has sharp corners up here so you don't have any room to swing it. So, no, this is spindle, spindle work only for your own safety. Anyway, let's see. Oh. Again, still got some wiggle. All right, this might be fun. Yeah, this isn't going to, this isn't going to work, Doug. <laughs> Something. Um, there's, there's, there's a bin of uh, some scrap wood back one of the it, back against the wall there. It is released. It's yeah. That's stable. It's it's up. No, no, I don't think it's that side, Doug. I think it's the front. All right, we'll give that a go. It felt like it was at the headstock though. It's up here. Yeah. Yeah, we need a we need a window wedge, a door jam wedge. Door jam wedge. Yeah. yeah. Front. Let's see.
right? Mm -hmm. That feels better. That feels better. Thank you. All right. Let's see what we got. Yeah, we got it. Got it somewhat better. <clears throat> Having a stable lathe is very important. <laughs> Vibration is the enemy when you're coming when you're turning because I'll probably not be able to turn this very fast because it's still got a little bit of wobble. So a lot of wobble. And most of you probably know the first first step is just to get to some balance to it so it's not trying to rock things around <clears throat> and I'd I got flatten the bottom and get my spigot next again this is very much like turning a, a, a bowl with a regular clean edge clean upper edge the only difference is it's backwards and when we get to the bark that's the only real differences where, where you got to be a little more where, where you got to do things a little differently or be a little more careful so right now I'm just getting the bottom flattened out and spigot made I do got a question for you Doug yeah. um, we got Chuck right Isn't that oh, okay <laughs> Not used to having an audience. One thing that I do a little differently than most people is when I cut my 
spigot, I'm using a little um, spindle gouge, just a quarter inch with a fingernail grind on it. It gives me, I can get in there and get a nice clean square corner. Oh, up against like this. Just a, just a little spindle gouge rather than a scraper. And I can get every bit as good of a corner without tearing things out as much. So. At this point, one of the things I do that's, that's different from a regular clean edge bowl is that from the bark edge, I will work down from the bark, even though that's opposite of what you would normally do, just so you're not knocking bark off it. So at this point, all I'm trying to do is get these get rid of the flats on the on the high points because a lot of this other part is going to be gone. So even if I had a flat up here or somewhere else, I wouldn't worry about it at this point. I'm just trying to get rid of these flats. Get my maximum diameter established. Now my upper upper diameter is established. Now I'll just shape the rest of the lower part of the bowl. This is a piece of red oak. And normally I don't, I don't turn a lot of oak, but it was just happened to be a handy piece. So there you go. Hmm. 
Ooh. I'm just making this up as I go along, folks. <clears throat> so I got a piece of rot there. I'm not even going to worry about that. I will probably later fill that in with uh, epoxy with coffee grounds or something like that. So I'm not too worried about that. It's not a big, big chunk missing. <clears throat> but I'm just trying to get a shape I like. As you've seen, I had to bring the bottom up because it has a lot of height. But basically, you're, you're just connecting the dots. This upper point, which you're kind of seeing through a, when it's spinning, you're just seeing a, I'll call it a ghost image, but maybe that's not exactly the right term. Um, just trying to get a nice shape and doing the outside. Like I said, the only, the only thing that's different is this last little bit here. You want to be coming, uh, pushing downhill or away from the top edge down so you're not peeling bark off it. That's not too bad. <clears throat> and I'll say, uh, normally, I would do, with when I'm doing natural edges, I will twice turn them. And this is a piece of green wood, so, but I'm going to just turn this down to final, final dimensions anyway. Um, normally, I like, to, I like to twice turn them because I really hate trying to sand wet wood. <laughs> that's, the biggest, that's the biggest thing. So I will set them on a shelf for months to whatever, and uh, <clears throat> and come back and, and do the final turning and sanding when they're dry. All right, so I'll take that as a shape. But basically, you're just connecting the dots, making a nice shape. Look at the profile. Make your choice. One of the things I do beforehand is I knock some of that bark off so I can get a good bite with my drive center. Um, I forgot to mention that, but I don't want to. I don't want to be trying to drive it through with using the bark as a as a as a uh, grip because it just won't hold worth a crap. Um, Hang on. I always repeat, I, the, repeat the question. If you're using a two-prong drive center, does it matter which direction it's going? Yes, I, I, I go with the grain. So I'm going in between the fibers of the fibers of the log are this way. So I'm going with my two-prong center, so it can get a good bite and it's not not cutting the grains. It's just pushing in between the in between the fibers. Um, <clears throat> done it once. <laughs> no, this will go down here. We all, yeah, usually, usually most people have done it once. A few people do it twice. All right. <clears throat> now, the only, before I start hollowing this, the uh, main concern, or two concerns, one is your knuckles. 
because you, you're going to have high points and low points. Even though I did, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, but you can also see that this is fairly well balanced. The, the high point, if I set myself up here to show you, high point right there, they're running around, high points real close to the same. Same with the low points, opposite sides. If I set it up, the low points are very close to the same, same level. So it doesn't look unbalanced or crooked when it's finished. Um, again, there's some, you can do some that have an artistic, artistic lean to it. If you've got, you got a good eye, um, it can be really, uh, really nice. But if you're doing a, the, the first few that you do, if you keep them balanced, it's going to be a lot better. Um, it's, it's just going to give you the confidence. <clears throat> but you got to watch your knuckles. <laughs> and everybody's done this at least once, too. <laughs> or you, you, you're, you're hollowing and you're concentrating on more of the center of the bowl, and your knuckles get scraped by this, the outer edge. So other than that, it's just a hollowing process. Like... It does. It does. And it... No, it's just this little wart here. As you do your first cuts, you will realize whether your wall thickness is consistent or not. Because if you're out here, well, right now it's five eighths of an inch or so, and down here I got probably closer to three quarters of an inch. So I'm I'm not following the outside curve of the bowl exactly. And you will the more the more uh, rounded this this bark is, the more you you will um, realize how even your wall thickness is. It's, it's kind of a good, um, good practice to, to get a, good, a feel for exactly how even your, uh, your tool handling is. So, as you can see, I'm not a professional. I check things a lot. <laughs> I look at, look at how I'm doing. Now I got it fairly even all the way around, um, probably a quarter inch or so. And I'll leave that, and then we'll just continue hollowing.
I'm not going to get too carried away. Anybody want to watch me sand for half an hour? Um, the one thing when you're, the difference, I'll say, when sanding a natural edge bowl is, again, the bark is not at the same, at the same level. So when I'm sanding, let me see if I can... Say that again. In the bowl, okay. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to get too fussy with, with trying to be perfect here. Final, um, but anyway, as I normally, I'm power sanding. I don't even need to. I can just show this stagnant. That's fine. Most of the bowl, I can power sand while it's while the lathe is running, um, and it won't be a big deal until you get out here, and that the difference in height of that bark is going to grab this thing and tear it up, kind of like it has a little bit already. Um, so what I wind up doing, and again with the outside, it's not as bad with the outside, but I'll still do it. I will just lean my arm against here and do the uh, power sand the edges and do a little bit at a time. It beats up your wrist a little bit, but I mean, you could wear long sleeve shirt or whatever, but that's the only way I find for me to um, not get this thing caught and tore up is to, is to you can do about three quarters of the bowl. Um, while it's spinning and the other quarter up by the bark you want to do while the lathe is off otherwise you're going to wind up tearing things up tearing up your your sanding discs um other than that finish you know sand and finish like normal and you have yourself a natural edge bowl <clears throat> again watch out for your knuckles when you're when you're hollowing a bowl you tend to get your knuckles real close uh, any questions? That's basically all I got. How do you oh. get the tenon off? Well, is the question. Okay. And what's the final thickness he goes for? Um, it, the final thickness will vary depending on the size of the bowl and what I just just by what I think is right. In this case, I got about a quarter inch or so, and it shows enough of the bark, but um, doesn't doesn't um, isn't too heavy I guess I'll say um, how do I get the tenon off well at home at my uh, my shop I have a vacuum jig so I can flip it around and put it on the vacuum jig and and just turn it freehand but here let me show you how I'll do that I have, I use a piece of leather. I'll just throw the leather inside, which will give me a little grip and it won't beat up. Because at this point, if I'm taking the tenon off, it's all sanded. It's got at least shellac on it, if not finish on it, probably finish on it. And then I would just put it here, bring up my center. Oops. better okay so I bring this up and I will just carefully pare away what I don't want with a gouge
Just make that as, as fine as you can. And you can pop that off and then do a little bit of sanding and you're all set. So that's, that's the demo. All right, thank you, Jeff. We appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> do you super glue the bark or do anything to keep it on? I do not initially. However, every once in a while, I'll break a piece of it off. You turn your mic off. Um, I do not generally super glue. I will inspect the piece before I do my uh, finish turning. And if there's something that needs attention, I'll, I'll deal with it, um, whether it be a little bit of super glue under the bark or if it's lifted up a little bit more, maybe a little bit of epoxy with some coffee grounds in it or something. Or I'll just abandon the piece if it's really bad. Um, if I knock a piece off, a piece of bark off in the process, I'll find a piece, piece of bark, which will be all over and make sure I get a good fit and make it, camouflage it, put a little super glue on it and glue a piece in at that point and then continue turning. Anybody else? Yeah. I didn't even look. Yeah, he asked what the turning speed was, but. Um, my, <laughs> I seen, and I forget who it was, a video and the one guy, the, the guy had said that as long as you're, as long as your lay's not shaking and you're not shaking, you're good. <laughs> Speed is your friend. Uh, yes, and that, that was one thing I wanted to mention also is that with the, with the, with the uh, natural edge bowls, you're turning, when you're out towards the bark, you're turning a lot of air. So you do want a relatively higher speed um, just, just to have your tool not bouncing on that wood as it comes in and out of the wood. Is that it? I think that's it. All right. Thanks a lot.